Welcome back. Thank you so much for coming again. Um, so, last episode we kind of went through uh, making some art, our little zombie guys here, which, you know, I'm not too happy with, but, you know, whatever. It's It'll be fine. Uh, <laughs> you'll f quickly find out that it's not a huge deal. Um, what? Uh, you know what your art looks so much. It doesn't look your game pretty, pretty well. I mean, better art, obviously, is, is good, but, um, you know, it's it's not the most important part of the whole process. So, um, but one thing I did kind of want to touch on is, last episode I mentioned that if uh, you guys watched me do all of the art, it would be way too long. Um, like most of the videos would be you guys just sitting and watching me do art, uh, which let's not let's not do that. Um, but I did want to go back and do another one real quick because I felt like I did you guys a disservice uh, whenever I told you about the border, about how you wanted to, to be you only thick and black if it's like a, a, a you know like an item or a power up or something you really want to pop against the the thing and that while that is true I also mentioned that you probably need to do that like l earlier in in the process and I did it really late I waited till after I'd done absolutely everything like shading and stuff like that um before I actually did that so I feel like it created a little bit of confusion and I apologize to you for that I know that wasn't fair to you guys um you know you're you're here because you want to learn how to make a game and stuff like that and, and setting you off on the wrong path is probably not the best way to go so we're going to go and make another one uh this one's going to be super simple super fast in case any you know those of you who are not interested in the uh art aspect of it um but we're just going to make a quick peg that's all we're going to do all right so i'm not very good at drawing circles on this so what i'm going to do i'm going to make a hard circle use the hard circle brush Gonna bump it up to about where I want it. Say 30, it's probably too big. 30, maybe. I tell you, that's pretty good. Boop. Maybe not. 31. Boop. Uh, 32, maybe? Mm, 32 looks too big. 31 it is. It's 32 by 32, so, I mean, 32 by 32 should have fit in here, 32 size, because it's supposed to be di uh, or the radius, not radius, um, yeah, what's it called, halfway through a circle? Like, half of its radius. Anyway, um, diameter out, shit, the diameter's all the way around. Anyway, as you can tell, math was not my strong suit. Um, but yeah, okay, so let's just go ahead and boop that down, change over to our eraser. Make sure it has our hard edge, or else it won't look right. And we're just going to erase inside. Oopsie doodle, I already screwed up. We're just going to do this all the way around. And I'll show you what I'm going to do that's going to make speed it up a little bit here in a second. Once I get the, the outline all the way around. Oops. And uh, one thing I mentioned in a previous episode, and I still stand by it, and someone asked me about it the other day, you know, how much money is there to be made in this? Um, there can be a lot of money to be made in this, uh, but that's not why you should do it. Because the people who manage to make mad amounts of money doing this are not, and not the majority. Um, and, and so do this because you love it, not because not because you're going to make money from it. Anyway. Going up here, I used uh, with the magic wand, which I think fuzzy select tools, what they call it in, in GIMP. Uh, so there we go. Just, uh, I clicked in the. Hang on. Let me show you guys what I did. So I, I erased all around there. I select the magic wand. I click here in the, the big solid part. Boop. Done. Okay. So we're going to go to select none. There we go. We're going to go to our base color. What color do you think we should make our peg? I mean, just silver seems to be like the standard, but come on, we want to, you know me better than that. You know, I don't like normal color stuff. Uh, let's go with, I wonder if we could sort of fake a sort of gold color. Eh. Go with like a bright red. 
bright red. Sure, why not? Because why not? I'm actually going to use that uh that wand, magic wand again. I'm going to have my background layer selected. Click inside here, that way it knows what layer. Because if I were to click inside there with the color one, it, it doesn't see, the layers don't see each other. So as far as this layer is concerned, this layer doesn't exist. Like it has no idea that there's anything there. So I would select the background layer, click inside there. It says, oh, you want me to go inside of this outline that you've drawn? Yes, I do. I'll go back over to the color layer. I will use my bucket tool. Bloop. There we go. We have a whole lot of that. Now, here's the part where I kind of messed up earlier on, and I just kind of skipped over the next part. You don't want to do that. Actually, what you want to do is you want to go ahead and color this outline now. Um, and you won't be able to see it right away. And for the ball, we may we may have wanted to uh, we may have wanted to actually keep the black outline, but for the sake of this tutorial, I am actually going to color over it. And I'll show you why here in a minute. Because before the last video I did, I didn't do this, and I waited till everything was done—the shading, the highlighting, the shapes, the colors—everything was done before I actually addressed the border problem. And it's much, much easier if you address the border problem now instead of waiting. Okay. Now I'm going to drag this on top of this. And it does display in order of uh, the layer. So uh, whatever your layer uh, kind of stuff is over here, it's going to um, draw in that layer. So if I were to have color above the background, it would draw on top of the background. All right. So on my background, I'm actually going to drop this down to 60% opacity. And there we go. Now we've we've got what I would consider to be a well bordered uh, thing. So, and since it's just the peg, we're going to try and make this fast. So let's say I'm going to move quickly. Shading heavy, shading light, and highlights. Bring this down to forty. Bring this down to 20. And depending on how shiny you want your object to be, I'll take this to 50. It's going to be real shiny. Real shiny. Alright, we're going to change this back to black. Um, yeah, let's go back to shading. And start shading around. I really need to take some art classes, to be honest. I feel like my, my pixel art would be tons, tons better if I just took some basic art lessons. And that that's probably my number one problem right now, at least my as far as I can see because I'm not an artist, is uh lighting. Like how best to shade things. And let's face it, that's whenever sprite art starts to look good is whenever you shaded it properly. Okay. Um let's go another layer deep on that. One more pixel layer deep. Because why not? Oops. I got a buddy Greg who's an artist. I probably should have had him do this because him and I have been looking for a project to do together for a while. And uh, this seems like it would have been a good opportunity for that. But uh, who knows? Maybe maybe we'll see old Greg here in a little bit. He's uh he's rather accident prone though, so it would be funny to try and see him teach a class like this. He'll I'm sure he'll Greg it up. <laughs> I hope he's watching. I hope he is. <laughs> Listen to me be a ruthless jerk to him. Nah, we love Greg. Greg's Greg's a good guy, I like Greg a lot. And uh he's a hell of an artist. Hell of an artist. And, uh, of course, I always make fun of him because he went to school, got an art degree. And I said, man, why didn't why didn't you go to school for something that can actually make you money? And then, uh, <laughs> kind of, I kind of tormented him with that. And then at the same time, I'm telling you guys, you know, do this because you love it, not because, because of money. And I, I stand by that. That's, and, you know, and if he's happy doing what he's doing, doing art, that's, and making the world a better you know more beautiful place hell yes like good for him that is awesome i i admire people who are able to follow their dream and passion money or no i mean i feel a lot better for them if they can make money heck if they can get rich making making the world beautiful hell yeah let's do that but i just don't 
it just doesn't work out that well for a lot of people. It doesn't work out quite that easily. And as you can see, I have oopsied a little bit, but I can fix that. It's not a big deal. I'll come back and grab that here in a second. Alright. Okay. Right there. Um, that's not bad. Highlights. For the highlights we use. Oops. Didn't mean to do that. Hang on. Cancel. Boop. Boop. Yeah, I don't know. I need to. I need to find somebody who actually knows more about Photoshop and GIMP and find out what like this double, this dual layer thing is. It, the foreground and background colors. I don't quite know. Maybe for like whenever you're using something like the airbrush, like it kind of colors two different colors at the same time. Like when you're trying to add depth to something, like shading around a tree or a bush or something like that. Like you can make sure like the shadow is a different color, but. That's something beyond what <laughs> what I'm gonna be doing uh, for sure. And you know, it's light right there. No, it's a little too hard. Let's let's choose a different brush that's a little softer. Uh, let's see, it looks a little softer. See, I don't know if I can do that. There's there's some brushes. Maybe it's this brush that does it. Yeah, there it is. Okay, all right. So and we're harder than that. There we go. See, that's not so bad. Shut up, Josh. Sorry, buddy Josh is watching this, I'm sure. There we go, a little bit of shading, makes it nice and shiny. That's it. Um, yeah, I know a lot of guys probably didn't come here for, for shading stuff, or for art stuff, but I, I felt like I, uh, it's a disservice to you guys about this. And uh, I'll try and get to it. I will try and not do that to you guys in the future. Uh-oh. I done messed up my my dock. I pulled it out accidentally. I don't know how I did that. How do I do that? I'll have to check it later on how to reset. How to reset my layout for GIMP. But anyway, moving on. Um, let's go ahead and export or save this as... Where were we? Uh, desktop, da -da -da, Google Drive, <sighs> tutorial project, there it is, art, GIMP, and we're just going to call this our peg, red peg, because we might end up using it for something else, who knows, and we're going to export it, now, Real quick, I think I've already, I, I think I can already tell a problem I'm going to have. And it's a very something that I probably should bring up, actually, so I'm kind of glad I'm going to have it. Is mixing pixel densities. Um, so, like, if I made this as 32 by 32, and then, uh, and 32 by 32, like, actual, like, pixel density, and then blew it up to be 64 by 64, but then I brought in my ball to be 32 by 32 and didn't blow it up, that means it would have different pixel density. Um, what that means is I'm sure there's some games you probably know at the top of your head that do this, um, where something looks just the right amount of blockiness, like it looks sprightly, you know, looks like a sprite, and then suddenly like a sprite that's the exact same size looks like much more high fidelity. Like it has more pixels in it. Like it's in that, it doesn't sound like a big deal, but that can be a very, very jarring. Uh, for a lot of people. A lot of people really, really don't like that. And I kind of don't blame them. I mean, I can tolerate it. It's not a huge deal. Um, but some people will just close your game uh, if they see that. It's it's really, really obnoxious to them. Um, so, yeah, I don't... I don't know. You can drop dockable dialogues here. Whatever. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and save it again and export. Let's drag it in. Make it the. Uh, oh, that's for a different game. Let's not. You didn't see those. <laughs> uh, not a big deal. Just a different game. Uh, tutorial project 
art pngs red peg all right cool um let's see what are what actors should we're going to put them in ball ball there we go and we may end up trying decided to change this later because why not and the reason that looks black is because we have our our color filter down here set to that if i just put it back to empty perfect okay and actually, you know, before when I was telling you the story about uh, being able to change the color to whatever color you want, um, and actually I can do that real quick here and if I wanted to and make a completely different color peg if I wanted to. Uh, yeah, sure, why not? Who cares how big it is? Boop. 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 There. Now suddenly I have a different color peg. Um, you can kind of do that with Game Salad as well in itself. Um, you can come in here, like say if I wanted to make a copy of the ball. I just make a copy of it. It's using the exact same art. I give it a different color, and then I just come down here and then pick a different color filter to put on top of it. And then it will should give it a different one. Now, the problem with that is is it's kind of hard to get the result that you want. Um, see how it's just all seems tends to come out black. That one kind of got rid of the thing, the the, the filter. That one just kind of looks like the, the highlight is off. So that's why I don't, don't really recommend doing it that way. Um, if you're going to make different colored actors that that fashion i wouldn't recommend using it in game salad um do it in uh in gimp <coughs> now the benefit of doing it in game salad is actually um one of the reasons you would want to do it in game salad is because then you don't you're reducing your footprint as far as size goes uh so it, it only has to remember one uh one uh, artist and it only remembers this one piece of art um but I mean, let come on. It's a PNG. It's it's gonna be tiny anyway. I mean, let's let's look up the size of this thing. It's it can't be that big. Properties. Yeah, I mean, look, that's tiny. That's nothing. That's not. <laughs> so don't sweat it over making a little bit of extra art. Make sure it looks okay. It's a big ass ball. May have to adjust that later. Who knows? So anyway. Back to actually making the game. All right. So one of our big problems was uh, difficulty and those guys coming up. The more balls you offer, the the actually kind of easier it is. And the difficulty with these games is making the long shot from one, one to another and having to get rid of all of them. So I'm going to go ahead and try something else. Um, what should we do? Uh, I'm thinking we're going to probably end up spawning less, for sure. Um, where was it? Where was our ball spawner? There it is, ball spawner. Uh, spawn pegs. Um, what's the... In front of actor, position, increased difficulty. Change that to 10. And Peg, when you move up, let's make you move up like more. Move up for one second at speed of. Let's make that a variable speed. Because right now it'll be 30 um, at speed of. What are we tracking here? Ball's active. Blah, 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 blah. Let's go with enemy move speed. I'm going to set that as 30 as default. And that's really one of the big... If I if I had to hammer in one lesson to you about this... And I don't like to hammer in lessons because you know people are going to learn how they want to learn. Um, is variables, variables, variables. Um, if, almost, if you could think of anything at all you want to do in a video game... And this is assuming that you're new to video game development... Is uh, variables. Do Whatever you want to do, you're probably going to have to make a variable for it. And the power of variables is, means that you can do anything you want, you know, like if, as long as you think outside the box enough and learn to make a variable for it. Like, if you'd asked me when I first started making video games, like, can I make these guys get faster every turn? You know, like, I don't, I don't really know. But now that I know, hey, I need to, I need to make a global variable and then increase that variable every time uh, I wanted to do something. So, um, let's go ahead and say, this sounds like it's going to be a little too hard. <laughs> we'll go and put this in the ball, a ball spawner as well. No, we don't want to do that. We don't want to put in the ball spawner. Where's our GM? We have a GM, don't we? See GM. Okay. That's track X, track Y, game over. 
Uh, ball has landed. Yeah, let's put it under ball has landed. We are going to say we don't need those attributes. Timer. All right, ball landed. We're going to change attribute. Attribute game ball move speed to find out whatever your current attribute is and then add one to it, please. Cool. I could do that. That's what the game says. All right. Let's go ahead and test that out a little bit. We need to make all these invisible. That's starting to look ugly. Let's start getting a, like a real background on here. Boop. Boop. Man, that's a big red ball. I'm probably going to have to reduce the size of that a little. That's a giant ball. Ooh-wee. Ooh-wee. Looks like a clown nose bouncing around. A little too easy thus far, but let's give it a little bit. We want to start off easy, right? Give a new player the chance to... Uh... Hmm. I feel like if it's going to start off that easy, we needed to have more guys that to start with. That way we don't have... I mean, there's starting off easy and there's boredom. And that that felt more like boredom. Put you guys at 300. 270 is okay. What kind of distance are we looking at? Uh, let's put you at 375. Say 475. 270. 270. 275. 275. We're going to make you uh, the flying V from the Mighty Ducks. Why not? That's a timely reference, right? Five seventy-five. Excuse me. Oof. Had a big dinner. Sorry, burping it up. Apologize. All right, you're two seventy. We do thirty. Difference of thirty. Two seventy. Two forty. All right. And actually, I could just you know type in here. Two four zero. Boop. All right, let's uh let's go ahead and save. God, that's a big red ball. <laughs> I'm gonna have to reduce the size of that. Good God. <laughs> oh man. And we're gonna close that. Right, if you guys see that. Okay. Where's something loosely resembling a game? With giant clown noses in it. Um, I am kind of curious if that attribute is actually increasing because it doesn't look like. I mean, I know it's only increasing by one each time. But at the same time. Then it'll seem like they're getting up, uh, going up all that fast, much faster. The really easy thing to do would be just to would be just to uh let this actor right over here you guys can't see me point. Uh, this actor right over here and put a behavior on it to display text, uh, whatever that text is. These don't seem to be moving up any faster than me. Yeah, let's let's do that to make sure that that's working. This is our debug text. You're gonna go ahead and display the text. And the move speed. 30 default. Yeah, it says it's increasing. Um, maybe we should increase it by 2 instead of by 1, because that seems... That seems real slow. Uh, let's go ahead and by 2, then. 
like it to escalate a little quicker than that. There we go. All right. Um, that's probably boring to watch, watch me play this for too much longer. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a power up. Let's just say a red barrel. In a lot of shooters, there's a red barrel that explodes. And we're going to go ahead and make a red, red barrel equivalent. Power up. Red barrel. Okay. Now, the behavior for this actually is going to be pretty easy. Um, I made some art for a different game, but please ignore how crappy it looks because, or you know, how un, out of place it's going to look just because uh, it's going to have a big tin in the middle of it. Oh, wait, what was that? That wasn't that, wasn't that project. That was, sorry, I'm working on like four projects right now. And not allegiance, that's what was in. Art, PNGs. There we go. Trooper bullet damage. Okay, um, let's see. We have power up barrel. You're gonna say actor. Actor. Alright, what's your behavior gonna do? You are actually going to change attributes. Wait. Interpolate. Let's interpolate actually. Interpolate. No, not in app purchase. Like, I never want that to ever be in my game, ever. Interpolate. Uh, let me see. Yourself, your size, your width to... What is your width now? I want your width to be pretty small to begin with. So let's go 8, 8, 128. Boom! Over one second. And once you do the exact same thing with your height. Size, height. There you go, buddy. Alright. Timer. After. One second. Destroy this actor. And actually, um, timer. Actually, let me, let's test it out the way it is first. I don't want to. Okay. First, it's not going to really do much. This is going to be the effect for it. Let's rename this. Red barrel. I could say explosion, but that's really fun, really big <laughs> effect. Uh, okay. And actually, you know what? I could use a particle. Let's not go to the particles right now. I feel like that's a, a topic for a video all itself. Um, particles are super cool. I love particle effects and particle emitters and all that kind of stuff, but they, they can be dangerous too. I've had times where I have a game working completely wonderfully, and then I decided to add a bunch of fancy particles to it, and God, it rained like garbage after that, because particles can be expensive. Power up. Power up. Red barrel. Um, let's just make you a big red red block for right now. Okie dokie. Size 120, 120. Put you in here. Oh, excuse me. Rule. If you collide with the ball, go ahead and spawn. Red barrel effect. And then wreck yourself. That's pretty much all it has to do, really. Spawn or right here. Explode. Okay. You're doing your thing. Um, let's make sure let's just test it out real quick, because it's not actually gonna do anything to the zombies yet. It okay, so that's good there. It kind of exploded like I wanted it to. One thing I wanted to do is actually, because you know, it kind of pops out and everything like that. What I wanted to do, and what I started to do before, but I stopped. Timer. After. 0.5 seconds. I want you to interpolate. Your own alpha. Which is like a translucence, however it looks, you know, the translucence to it. 4.5 seconds to zero. Let's see what it looks like now. See if it looks better. A little bit better. All right, cool. Um, all right, so what you're going to do now is peg 
get hit. We're going to do the same thing. We're just going to say change this to all instead of from any all to any, and collide with barrel effect. All right, let's save it, and we'll wait till some of those guys get up here. Never mind, no, we're not. Let's go and try that again. I'm going to shoot off this side, shoot off this side, shoot off this side. Come on, come on, come on, Eileen, you know what I mean. All right, we're going to nick this in the corner, hopefully, and it'll kill the zombies. Mm, I don't know how I felt about that. Let's try that again. Let's put some zombies near it now, actually. Let's let's go back here. We're going to... I'll probably end up making that bigger. It's not much of a power-up if it only hits about as... Well, first of all, the ball needs to be smaller. Um, but secondly, it's a pretty small explosion, actually. Okay. Yeah, I didn't even hit those guys. It was a really, it's just actually relatively long, like it went too slow. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at this. We're going to go ahead and say... 250, why not? And you're going to be over 0.5. And where's my energy blade? Let's move you up here. I don't like you being away from your buddy. 250, 0.5. Now let's hope that. Ooh. I wonder if the collision only takes effect for its original size and not its bigger size. I wonder if, like, when it's growing up over the other actors, if it's not actually. Registering that as collision. That's hard to tell. <laughs> yeah, I think that's it. I don't think it's actually... Huh. Huh. Okay. We can still work with this. Still don't like how small that is. We're going to go big, massive sun. Let's see what that looks like. Deesh. What? What? Hang on. Back up. Back up. Yeah, it's definitely not working. But didn't it? It's hitting that one? What the hell? I am officially confused. It's hitting this one, but it's not hitting those? That doesn't make any sense. Something funny is going on. Huh. <laughs> Let's pull these guys back a little bit, actually. I wonder... What's in the Wonder Ball? It's not really a good test. Why in the world? Okay, what's... Your guess is as good as mine as to why this one is being affected, but and this one, but not these. Okay, let's let's do this. Any. Um, key is pressed, let's say, R. Save. Oh, I'm going to knock it and the ball. 
R. I don't want to bore you guys too much longer with this. I may have to cut for, for this episode and try it again. Why are you doing this to me? Okay, let's try this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to close Game Salad. I'm going to reopen it. You'd be shocked at how often I have to do this to keep a bug from happening. I, I mean, don't go. I love Game Salad. I do. I think it's Great, great thing for new game developers that don't want to code a whole lot. I think it's fantastic for them. It is not without its issues. Hmm. Alright. Well, let's see what we can call that uh, for an episode. It's already ran over like about 15 minutes more than I wanted it to. I'm trying to keep these... I know you're very busy and you have better stuff to do, but... Um, you know, so I thank you for even watching it all, but yeah, so, uh, this is gonna be it for this episode, and I try to keep them between, uh, you know, 20 and, 20 minutes and 30 minutes, but I think pretty much all my episodes have gone over that at this point, but we'll, we'll try and shorten this up, so, uh, thank you so much for coming, and, uh, I'll see you next time. Real quick before I go, I'm supposed to do another one of these end screens, so here's the end screen. Links on the screens. Check them out. Thanks. Bye.